what are your, uh, what do you think is going to happen with UB 2020 in the assembly? Well, the last two years, there was no action. And I remember when John Simpson and UB asked me to file this bill way back two years ago, they did not expect immediate results. They said that they'd be happy with anything, anytime, uh, obviously as soon as they can get it, but things like this take time. This is a very profound change in the nature of a major university within the SUNY system. It changes the rules for one university, gives that university powers more like a private institution, and therefore has aroused a lot of hackles around the state. So this is not an easy process. So your bill is now in the edu Higher Education Committee, which is chaired by a woman who last year was vocal about her uh, not supporting SUNY empowerment. Does it have a, a shot this year, or don't we know? Well, uh, there is support from wall-to-wall -wall membership in the Western New York delegation. There is support from some downstate members. There may be support from uh, quite a few members if this moves with other bills that provide similar treatment to other campuses. There is obviously opposition from interested groups, uh, opposition from the people who work in SUNY, represented by the United University Professions, opposition from the New York State United Teachers, opposition from the AFL-CIO, opposition from the CSEA, and opposition from the merit contractors who are concerned about the PLA and prevailing wage provisions in the bill. So there is substantial opposition, but at the same time there is substantial support for it at the western end, the UB region uh, of the state. Now there are prognostications about uh, job growth and job creation that were established at the beginning of this legislative process. There have been changes in the bill though that result in the bill costing more money and providing less revenue because of the caps on tuition. So those job counts uh, may be called into question, but it's going to be an uphill battle. Have the job counts been changed? No. No. So the, the estimates have not been changed No. The, in its original form, this was a proposal which was going to unshackle the University at Buffalo from all kinds of costly state mandates. Uh, one category of those mandates deals with project labor agreements and prevailing wages that would be paid on construction projects. Rather than unshackling the University at Buffalo from those requirements, this bill expands those requirements to include the private side of public-private partnerships which are authorized in the bill. Uh, that means that projects will probably cost about 25 percent more than they otherwise would. Uh, also, in the latest set of amendments that the University wanted to this bill, there are limits put on the amount that tuition can rise within any one semester, limits on the amount of tuition increases for students from families with incomes under 60000 All of those things are different from the beginning, and therefore the prognostications about job creation probably have to be recalibrated as well. Plus, uh, there's a lot of talk about building new buildings in downtown Buffalo. Those were not part of the original UB 2020 proposal, and those are things that probably would require additional state funding anyway. Bear in mind that this proposal is intended to be a revenue neutral proposal. Uh, some say, well, of course, it has an impact on the budget because it will mean if there's higher tuition, more requests for TAP aid. But setting that aside, 2020 is supposed to be a revenue neutral proposal. And therefore, if you shrink the ability to raise tuition, if you provide that it's going to cost more to build your, build, build your buildings, then uh, it, you've got to reflect that in what you anticipate you can do in terms of construction job growth in particular, uh, and also in terms of uh, SUNY UB payroll uh, as well. Do you have any uh, idea why this was presented by Grisanti uh, rather than Maziar's? Uh, that's a question for the Senate. Uh, Senator Maziarz did originally introduce the bill. <clears throat> uh, then Senator Grisanti introduced a different bill. 
uh, both presumably with the consent of the University at Buffalo. Brizanti bill is different from the original Maziar's bill in that it in that it does have these throttles on tuition. It says that uh, in any one semester tuition cannot be raised more than so many dollars. It says that students from families with incomes under 60,000 cannot see their tuition go up. Uh, both of these things then limit the ability of 2020 to generate the revenues for UB, which it would use uh, to grow. One last question. Sure. Okay, and that is, uh, have, have you heard anything one way or the other from the University of Buffalo that they are really enthusiastic about this and that they want to go ahead, or is this something that doesn't look so much like the original plan, so they're not that enthusiastic? Haven't heard anything since the uh, Senate passed the bill. Uh, last thing we heard was Schiminger filed the bill, and we did. Uh, UB is right now in some transition, of course. Uh, the incumbent president is remaining on until a replacement is appointed. That appointment could come any day or week now. Uh, I tend to think that at that point there will be a little more direction from the university as to how it wants to go about this process. Bear in mind that last year the university took the position that we're more interested in doing a system-wide change than a UB-only change. Uh, we've got to wait and see, I think, what the new leadership at the university uh, wants to do before I can tell you what UB wants to do.